Hello Singapore and Asia Pacific. At SMB, we're excited to revisit Singapore and work with traders interested in learning the U.S. equities market. I'm Mike Bellafuri, author of the trading classic One Good Trade and partner at SMB Capital, a proprietary trading firm that sits in downtown Manhattan. Ask me one-on-one -on -one questions about the markets. Learn the best trading setups from our experienced traders. Finally, take control of your trading decisions. Trading is the best job in the world. Please come and take our training class in Singapore and learn how the pros do it. I look forward to meeting you soon. Welcome to Philip Capital Weekly Market Watch. My name is Victor Y from Unit Trust Research. In this week's commentary, we are looking at the significant policy announcements in June which impacted global equities and what to expect in the coming month. It is official that the Fed could be winding down its 85 billion asset repurchases to the market by the end of the year. Economic data from the manufacturing to housing deliver a dose of optimism for investors in the aftermath of the policy announcement, when Dow suffered its second largest loss of the year. In the first half of the year, much of the US equities euphoria has been centered on the central bank's monetary policy. Now that the announcement has been made, expectations defined, market attention can be diverted to US earnings in July. Chinese stocks plunged to levels not seen since the global financial crisis. The Asian market's route came on the back of the Chinese central bank refrained from pumping money into the market to ease liquidity concerns. Many analysts draw comparisons to the initial days of the global financial crisis meltdown. It was revealed that most non-banking companies use some form of financial transactions to drive profit growth. For instance, manufacturing companies take loans from banks at low rates prior to lending out money to other parties, thereby earning a spread on loan by taking on additional credit risk. This is, in effect, shadow banking playing out in China, which the PBOC tries now to get a grip on. Despite the recent slump, China makes a strong long-term investment case. First, it is clear that the new leadership is keen to swallow the bitter medicine of controlling shadow banking early rather than the wait. Credit market freezing up is a deliberate cost pursued by the leaders. Second, macro data suggests that PBOC has sufficient space to relax monetary policy if it wants to reinvigorate growth above the targeted 7.5%. Third, shadow banking is not new and many astute investors may take this opportunity to accumulate on the slum. In the week ahead, we are expecting China's manufacturing PMI, US unemployment rate, as well as US ISM data. What we find interesting is that there are numerous Chinese companies breaking new highs, while the benchmark index is trending lower. This makes a compelling case to profit from a bottom-up investment philosophy. Professionally managed unit trusts such as Aberdeen China and First State Regional China Funds adopt a bottom up investment approach. Thank you for watching this week's video commentary. We'll see you next week.